Hello and welcome to another episode of SPL Express, the show you need to watch for all the key talking points ahead of an exciting weekend of domestic football action. We have Rish Roshan Rai here, as always, who's going to give those talking points ahead of Match Week 9. But first, let's check out what transpired over the weekend in Match Week 8. Three games over the weekend, producing 13 goals. On Friday, we saw Lion City Sailors survive a late onslaught from Haugang United to pip them to a 4-3 victory. Meanwhile, in the Western Derby, Elbrecht's Nagata edging Tanjong Paga 2-1. And on Sunday, Tampering's Rovers beat Palace Calza 2 goals to 1 as well. And with those results, it means that Lion City Sailors continue their reign at the top of the Singapore Premier League after 8 games on 19 points. They're ahead of Tampering's Rovers and Elbrecht's Nagata. Belsa Kalsa and Haugang United, meanwhile, are in 5th and 6th respectively, while Geelang are in 7th on 5 points. Here's a look at the games coming up this weekend. On Friday, Belsa Kalsa entertain Albrecht's Nagata at the Topayo Stadium. Meanwhile, our feature game is on Saturday. The Lion City Sailors welcome Geelang International at the Jalambasa Stadium. And concurrently, Haugang United will play Tanjong Paga United. So lots of exciting football to look forward to. Let's start with that game on Friday, Ballastia against Albrecht's Nagata. Ballastia struggling, of course. They missed out on Hoshino last week, who was out due to COVID. Uh, Roshan, let's talk about Hoshino and his importance to this Ballastia side. Very important player. I think we saw that uh, in the game against uh, Tampanese, and we've seen that in the first round of the season. Um, his link-up play, now that he's playing in his preferred number nine role as that central uh, striker, um, being flanked by the likes of Taniguchi, Kondo uh, and what I mean by that is the ability to link up with those players and he can bring others into play uh, with his hold up, the qualities in his, in his hold up as well and now he gets into the penalty box, he can find opportunities to finish those chances. He's a good finisher, Hoshino. Uh, I think they particularly missed his presence uh, in that game against Tampanese. Uh, Funnily enough, you know they actually won the two games going into that uh, into that match. So perhaps they would have been going into that game against Tampanese full of confidence, having had that break to sort of work on a few things. Uh, and maybe now with Hoshino coming back into the side, it gives them that focal point up front. And it's something they can work with uh, going into this game. They face an Elbrick side who can score goals. Mm. And many of those goals have come from Tanaka. Actually, most of the goals have come from Tanaka. Yeah. We'll talk, let's talk about the Tanaka and Omori partnership yeah. and how important or what they've brought to this team. Yeah, I think... Uh, Elbrex are a side who don't just know how to score goals, but they know how to create lots of chances. I think they were so dominant in their win against Tanjung Paga. Um, Tanjung Paga only had like, well, I think, four shots on goal throughout the match, whereas Elbrex went into like double digits. I think it was 20 something shots uh, um, in that game. So they really dominated the Tanjung Paga side and they were full of quality and they create lots and lots of opportunities because of the structure that they have. And then coming back to these combinations that you're talking about, especially on the left hand side. Uh, with Omori pushing forward from left back. He's the one who sort of gives them that width, allowing Sugita to then drift in field as well and drift across the, the attacking areas. Uh, and Tanaka really basically is a striker who just has to wait for the service to arrive and make sure that when those crosses come in, because he's going to get the quality of the delivery from the wider areas playing in this Albrecht side, that he's there to, to finish off those opportunities. And to his credit, he's been doing uh, exactly that. A quick one, how should Belisti approach this game then? I think it will be how they've usually done in these situations in the sense that I think they will need to be compact uh, and, and very organised to try and frustrate Alberex uh, because it is very difficult for them to really sort of open up and be expansive against a side like Alberex who have better quality. So I think, you know, try and frustrate Alberex if they can uh, for most of the situations and of course, you know, rely on the fact that Hoshino perhaps will be coming back and if he comes back, he'll be an important player for them. Um, and then Taniguchi and Kondo and expect that Japanese trio to really do the damage for them as they've done uh, for large parts of the season so far. Let's move on to the game on Saturday. Haugang up against Tanjong Paga United. Haugang have suffered one of their poorest starts to the season in recent years. What's gone wrong for them? Well, yeah, that's a, that's a difficult question to answer because, you know, when... There's a lot of optimism around Haugang, right, coming into this season. I know I personally said I think they should be challenging for the title. So I'm a bit, been a bit disappointed with how things have gone for them. I think what hasn't helped uh, Haugang is the fact that they've lost key players uh, at times. The likes of uh, Pedro Botoluzo, he was missing for large parts of the first round of the season. Uh, and that takes, you know, that, that striking point away from your team, takes goals out of your team. And so they have to readjust in those situations as well. Uh, Shawal has been in and out of the side, he's been injured here and there. So those are some of the things that they've had difficulties with and that defence as well. I mean, there's, there's a lot of reshaping having to go on. And what I mean by that is players having to drop in and play in, in, in different positions let's, let's because talk of the injuries the that they've had. Let's talk about the defence because 
at times they look so suspect at the back. They do. They look far too open. And uh, again, I don't want to just criticize the back line for this and say it's just a back line issue. I think it's a whole team issue because there have been occasions where you know they uh, have found themselves a little bit too open in between the lines, in between the spaces, uh, and that's allowed opposition sides to essentially attack that back line. There's not enough protection for them. Uh, whether that comes down to personnel not being available, you know, Shafiq Ghani, for example, playing in central midfield and having to play a defensive midfield role. That's not his best role, but he's having to do a job for, for the team in that sense. So they don't quite have enough of that protection for that back line. The back line as well, as I said, a lot of reshuffling going on in terms of trying to figure out uh, what the best lineup is and whether they've been able to, how long to actually play their best lineup um, in terms of players being available to them. So lots of issues. It's not just one particular thing that's causing them those problems. Uh, but yeah, just look at the start. It hasn't been where they are where they would like to be on the table. Uh, thankfully for them, there's still a lot more games to go and hopefully if you're a Haogang fan, you start to see players coming back from injury uh, and they need a little bit of luck in, in those situations as well. Let's shift our attention to Tanjong Paga. Winless in their last three, has the bubble burst? <laughs> it's tempting to say that, but also when you look at the, the teams that they've played in their last three, it's essentially the top three sides in the SPL. Um, Tampanese Rovers, that was that comeback in round one, three all. Uh, and then they had games against uh, Lion City Sailors. That was a difficult one where they were they were hammered by six goals to one. And then coming back into league action up against uh, Elbrex where they were completely dominated and it weren't in the game at all. So I think there's a temptation there perhaps to say, yeah, the bubble has burst a little bit, but also they've played against difficult teams. Uh, and I think there's there's a chance for them to, to, to really bounce back now, you know, and, and, and show... You know that uh, you know the first round of matches wasn't really a fluke, and it's going to be down to the players, yes, but also the coaching staff to try and g the team up again and get them going again uh, in in that sense. I mean, they still have players in there who can cause problems. Uh, you know, you can always rely on Rio Nishiguchi to get you a goal, even from out of nothing, which is what he got uh, against Elbrex when they were struggling so much. He actually opened the scoring for them with a wonderful solo effort, uh, and then the likes of Blake Rusciuto in there as well. So. I think they do have a squad capable of, of picking things up. I mean, you have to be fair to them as well and say that the opening round of the season was them kind of overachieving in a sense. You know, it was, it was really Tanjung Paga. A lot of people were, were saying coming into the season, into this campaign, that they'd be struggling towards the bottom half of the table. That hasn't proven to be the case at all. So it's a credit to them that they are where they are at the moment and that we're now starting to wonder if that, that bubble has burst. So I think it's a credit to them the, in terms of the performances that they put in so far. Well, let's shift our attention now to the feature games. Lion City Sailors up against Geelang International. Hmm. Now, Sailors beating Haogang 4-3 and uh, Kim Shinook uh, stole all the headlines there <laughs> with a hat-trick. Yep. But the player we want to focus our attention on is Maxim Lestien and his influence on his team. Yeah, uh, incredible influence that he's had. I mean, the chances that he's been creating um, and his it's chance creation to minute ratio is, is absolutely outstanding. I mean, one key pass every 14.6 minutes. Let's say one key pass every 15 minutes uh, or so the season. Two goals, five assists that he's picked up. 22 uh, key passes in this campaign. Um, to me, he is, you can see that he's coming from a very high level um, and it looks very comfortable for him playing in the, in the SPL. And he is certainly a key outlet for them, uh, creating chances for his teammates. Kim Shinook, I mean, to play with players like this as a striker uh, must be a dream. And Shinook, you look at his goals, a lot of them come in the penalty area, in the penalty box. So that's where he's got to station himself. He knows the service will arrive, especially with the quality uh, in and around him. And Lestien has been superb. You know, out on the left-hand side, the timing of his movement um, has been outstanding. It's something that I think a lot of uh, local players, local wingers can, can learn from is the timing of the runs. He's not just running straight down into the channels. You know, he's making sure that he's not getting himself into offside positions. He's running across that forward line. Uh, and then cutting in and it, the, the movement is very intelligent sometimes he stretches the pitch sometimes he makes those runs in field uh, on the inside of a fullback so once he does get into those dangerous areas then it's about making sure you find the quality and the decision making with the pass finding the right pass finding the right quality with the pass uh, and that's what he's been able to provide sometimes you get players who get into those good positions but that quality of the pass is not quite there not the case with Lestien as all, uh, at all he's been fantastic for Lansi Sailors Well they face the Geelang side who've been struggling this season uh, just one win all season as well an interesting stat is the fact that five of the players have played all of their matches and these are the four foreign signings as well as Zaiful Nizam. Mm. They will miss Zaiful who's on SEA Games duty right now. Yeah. 
what's gone wrong for Geelong or how did they turn this around right yeah, now? Yeah, Geelong, I mean, it's such a strange situation for them and I'm, I've, I've, at times I felt a little bit sorry for them because I think there have been a few matches this season where the performances have been decent and I don't think they've deserved to lose or draw uh, those games. But I think defensively they've been a little bit loose as a team overall. Uh, they allow the opposition too many opportunities against them and some of the goals conceded frustrating for, I would imagine, a coach. You know, sometimes there have been certain individual errors or poor decision making um, in certain defensive areas that have resulted in them dropping points or losing matches. Um, the, the, the one that was a big shock to me was the game just before the break. I think it was against the Young Lions where they lost by four goals to one. Uh, that was a big surprise because I think, you know, it, I, I look at that game and I wonder, you know, we talk about bubbles bursting. Remember, they started the season off with a 1-0 win against the Lion City Sailors and that's been the only win in the league so far. So that, that bubble has well and truly burst. And I wonder with that defeat against the Young Lions, what the morale like, it is like in, in that dressing room. Because when I look at the team, actually, they have a pretty decent starting eleven. I think the depth is, is, is what's a bit of an issue for them in terms of quality coming through off the bench. Um, still, with players like Sime Zuzul uh, in there, um, they always have that player up front who can create against something out of nothing. But he needs a little bit more assistance from the, from the rest of the side. So Roshan, you will be at that game, which is our feature game for this week. It's the Lions City Sailors up against Geelong International at the Jalan Besar Stadium. Coverage begins from 5pm. So that's all the time we have for today. There's lots of football to look forward to, so enjoy the action live on our social media platforms. Till next time, goodbye.